What's up Gunplum Modelers? This is Strider Prime bringing you a new edition of Gundam Models. And today we're going to be reviewing some magazines. I've actually picked this up a few, about a month ago, and I forgot that I had it in my backpack. And in the midst of me preparing my move, I found these two magazines that I remember purchasing. And I thought it would be a cool idea to review them. Uh, right now we have the Fine Scale Modeler April Edition, which is now for this month, which we'll review in a minute. But I want to review this one. Fine Scale Modeler's uh, special issue, Damaged, Weathered and Worn Model Magazine. This is the Spring 2019 edition. And uh, it's... I wanted to review this because this comes with a, a very, very weathered and detailed ZGMF 1017 Gen. Let's look at these magazine here. Oh, Airfix's uh, Grumman's F6F5 Hellcat. Uh, what scale is this? This looks too... Yeah, this is huge. This is actually a 124 scale kit. Because look at the detail that they put on. This has to be... Well, I think 135th scale is around this big. So think about another 10, 20% bigger than this. That's a big kit. I remember getting... Uh, building the 132nd scale Hellcat from, um, I believe, Tamiya a long time ago. So this this one is uh, Walking Death. Basically, how to paint some figures um, that will look like something out of a zombie movie. Referring to George Mer 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 yeah. George Romero films there here in the comments. Um, it's using some figures from a company known as Night Models. Scale is 70 millimeters. And some detail ideas here. How to make a brick uh, surface. And some detail information here priming it using parts of a you know of a car and I see it's using acrylic paint acrylic polyurethane surface primer by Vallejo and then here is the layers of texture that it shows here I'm not a very big fan of actual, you know, uh, p uh, painting of facial features and like that. And the, I've tried in the past and it doesn't always look good. I would definitely butcher a p uh, figure like that. That's why you, you don't see me actually build, uh, painting the, the figures that come, you know, the 1-100 scale figures of model kits that come in from Gundam. Because I can, I never, I, I know I will screw it up and it's, maybe it's something that I never got into. This is a cool way of doing the zombie. Pretty nice. And then of course I have to detail and chip and weather the the um, the car. I see there's some he's using AK products for that. Here's an advertisement. And the next page we have the X-Wing fighter from um, from not the is it the Force Awakens? I think it is. You know that or the last, uh, the last Jedi, but this is Poe Dameron's uh, X-wing fighter. From is it the is it Bandai? Yeah, it has to be Bandai because you're not gonna see uh, you're not gonna see a uh, Ravel version here. But here you can see how he uh, primed it white. All right, so I can nice I can see what everybody's saying that if you're gonna use yellow or orange or something, something that has a little bit more brighter, you definitely would like to paint primate white and I've never done that I've heard you know it was actually Zach Aurelius himself who actually sent me a message and said that to me that you should do it prime white never thought of that so some real cool detail work there especially in the in the metal parts hand brushing it with chrome black chrome silver and this looks like a tester no excuse me a Tamiya bottle enamel The chip it's cool to see that and doing the chipping effects and that little um, that little effects with the uh, metal so you put a black base and then you use some uh, silver on it to give it the highlights here and there this comes with a net that he used um, 
So he used enamel wash dark brown, and then he used enamel wash interior, but that looks like a green color. Yeah. Then I see some something here that looks like a, a paste dark yellow oil paint. So he's using oil paints there to give it to give it more highlights here and there. That's really nice. It's kinda hard to do weathering on something with a black base, but it depends on how it looks. And here's um here's some information on how to get Vallejo paints for weathering. Thick mud, engine effects, splash mud, environment. Mouse trouble. So this is more of a little diorama scene. Again, using um, this one is using a, a 135th scale from various brands, but this is more of a custom here, custom idea and design. Clearly, they use regular. Um, you know, um, whenever you go to a hobby store, they'll sell um, plywood. At very, you know, at various sizes, you can cut it and shape it to the way you want, and then give it the texture and look that you need. Um, one day I'll do a diorama. I've done the idea of doing a diorama before and obviously it didn't turn out the way I wanted. That doesn't mean I'm not going to do it again and eventually I may want to do it again someday. I have some ideas that's because I like the idea of some people they like to take a little stand of, of, of something and make a small diorama just for a small mobile suit. So I kind of like that idea. Here are some AK paints that he's using um, brush for brush and airbrush. I can't see the wording here. Um, light gray, middle gray, gray brown, various grays here. And then we have some, I guess these are washes and pigmentations. And then using some environments to give it more texture look. <laughs> Even little rats. And then this would be, then you see other effect parts here. This would be the overall look. Looks actually really nice. Ships at sea. Again, uh, an art that I have never seen. I would love to get into, but I don't know where to begin. This one's using a 1350 scale uh, ship by a company known as Mirage. But the whole purpose here is probably the, the ship is built, but how do you create the weather effects? the sea effects and I've seen all those you know unique ideas this one I see that take I guess he takes a foam like structure make a cavity so it actually f the ship fits in it and then does the wavy effects and use regular white glue white glue of course is um, a useful tool useful product and then you I, okay so I see that with various colors he does I guess the seafloor then there's some white gel transparent and i've seen videos of this that it's like a um, a paste like substance you use a brush or or in this case a sponge and you apply it and then it looks foamy at first but when it dries it it comes to become clear yeah, here's more details on how to use it water gel transparent diorama and water effects water gel effects and then white paint to give it that look of waves crashing to it. I wouldn't even know where to begin with that. But it, it is kind of cool to see this firsthand. Right here. That's actually very nice. And this is actually, even though 1350 is a, is a large scale tech, this is a small ship. That's actually really nice. Look at how well that thing came out with. How the water is breaking and all that. Z50LS, so it's a, an aerobatic aircraft by HPH Models, 135th scale, using both acrylic and enamel, acrylic lacquers, sorry, acrylic lacquers and enamel washes. So of course you want to work on the inside of the of the control panel 
And then you want to build the, in, you know, paint the inside so you can show on the inside. The engine block. Oh, and of course, the ever so popular masking. So you mask the kit, and then you give it that metallic look. And here's there's two tones of metallic. Does it cover this in, in the page? Let me see here. Setters. Don't. Doesn't say which which paints to use. I wouldn't be surprised if they use Alcad. But then again, AK products do make some great metallic finishes. Okay, more advertisement. Then we have a double duty. Some sort of. Uh, this is from Hasagawa, 135th scale. Again, I am always admiring how, I, whenever I go to a hobby show and anything like that, I see a lot of kits from various things, you know, um, sh uh, series or, or types, but you never see like a construction vehicle as a model kit sometimes, and that's a rare rarity that when you do. And I see he's, um, oh, okay, so this part, this is a cool effect. So he actually, decides to make take uh, masking tape cut this section here and apply it here then spray paint something that's more of a um, opaque look to it and it will look like you know how like um, when you're in the car and your and your windshield wipers are going back and forth back and forth and you have the area that's clear that's cleaned but then the outer area is still foamed up or have some um, dirt and, and de debris on it that is a cool effect to see something like that. Dust, dirt, and deposits. Both yellow and light dust deposit. Hmm. So you actually, he actually applies it everywhere. So areas that collect dust and dirt. That's a lot of work there. The drivetrain is another one, but look, this product, of course, does that dirt effect. This is something that you would normally see also on tanks, on armored vehicles, and this is perfect for the type of kit like this. Look at that. That is really nice. That is very nice. And then we have the solid orange color, orange-red type color, since it's a construction vehicle. I don't think you'll be seeing construction vehicles in camouflage or digital camo. But the final result looks nice. And look at the chipping and weathering here. That is excellent. I love that. That's a lot of work there. Salt Flat Racer DS62. I can't even pronounce that. That's some good detail there. This is something that I would think Eliclac Paints would use. To give it that finish and how smooth it is because you barely you know that's the one thing about metallic paints and uh, and i've shown this in the past where you want you want to have a nice smooth finish without the the uh, da, you know, um, without anything that disturbing the surface texture and i've noticed that in my in I haven't done any metallic builds in a long time. Eventually I want to do so, but now I need to look into the possibility of doing a metallic build where I can try to get the surface as nice and smooth as possible using black paint, but trying to make sure that there's no bubbles on it, there's no droplets on it, and if I have to use um, um, sanding paper, it has to be very, very light sanding paper to smooth it out to the point where you can barely feel it and see it. All right, so here's what we want to see, the history of the G, uh, ZGMF 1017. And there's some detail here, but for those of you, if anybody remembers, I believe this was, uh, this was from uh, Stargazer. Yeah, it's from Bandai, 144 scale. And he did some amazing weathering work technique here. Here he used a red primer. He used a red primer so he can give it that wet, that rust effect. Black primer on the weaponry. Let's, let's look at this. 
and he used the saw technique which we've all seen in certain videos so that way he can do the chipping effects so he puts the salt on the red or the burnt red or the rust type red and then after it dried he then sprayed it the green green colors the uh, yellowish colors and then begin removing the salt to show off the effect that's actually a kind of a cool effect but you know rock salts is a very very big particle to be placed on something as small since this is a high grade kit they have never made a gin or din or any any of the um, mobile suits uh, um, so the um, the cannon father mobile suits from from destiny I'm sorry yeah from seed not from seed destiny from seed um, you would think that they would make one It'd be nice to see one in an R's and RE kit but this is actually a really interesting idea and concept. I like that. And then we have him using this to give it more uh, rust, rusting effect. That's something I would definitely like to try. Especially around here in the metal areas. Look at that. Look at the detail there. That is actually excellent. And it's kind of cool to see that if the, the the legs doesn't have to be the same color here. So one leg is red, the other one is green. Unless he painted the other. Yeah, no, he used the he used that. Then we have then we have mud effects to add on to the area there, pigments around there. I have this, and I do remember that I have the um, what was it? The, it's not extreme metals. It's another one that's like a, a paste type. Uh, thing and I, I applied it on the kit now this product when you apply it on the kit you really got you have to top coat it because it has a weird feel to it and I haven't used it yet again I may end up using it again um, don't know but it has a good look to it as the effects right there right there there yeah what a way to end this book. I like it. Very nice. So if you ever see this, pick it up. Maybe you guys have some ideas. Let's look at the other book. Okay. <laughs> Famous model kit, of course, of uh, Gorgo. Remember that? Cult TV Man. Squadron.com. Very good websites to purchase and see some, some items to pick up. Again, promoting the uh, damage. This could be... Oh, this is for summer of... I can't see that. Is that 2019? So this what is what we're going to be seeing in, uh, this summer. So in a few months. Um, that's a cool tank there. Oh, that's actually a really cool diorama of a, of a Liberator. Some detailed information. Make blast damage the easy way. Hmm, okay. 50th anniversary of Apollo 11. Alright, so products here. We have uh, some aircraft, wing nut. They always make some really cool biplanes. This is a nice, cool looking uh, Yak 130. Tempest Mark V, Japanese Self Defense Fourth Trainer Jet. I remember watching the first episode of Rescue Wings, and I remember that, that you know they used the hel that type of helicopter. Um, cool plane there, a Thunderbolt 144 scale, so that's really small. Shinden Kai, again Rescue Wings, but now a smaller scale. And this one is a Russian transport, so this is going to be a lot bigger kit right there. Especially, well, this one. So it's, is this the same aircraft? No, this is in the 6 engine, 140 scale, 144 scale by Ravel. And we have some armor. The German Puma. Jagdpanzer G1, weight production, $84. 
from Tacom. Tacom, I remember. Striker Dragonfly Infantry Fighting Vehicle for 70 bucks by Panda. Italiards. T3485, probably a new molding. Well, it has to be because look at that, it's 80 bucks. And then we have Tamiya's Marauder 3. That one's about, well, no price tag on that. Those are the 132nd scale. Here's 148 scale. You have a, that's actually really nice with the 88 gun flak set. I always did like this vehicle. Type 16 maneuver combat vehicle from the Japanese. Russian Army tractor set. This is actually nice. Oh wow, that's a 1 100 scale. I didn't notice that. Then I want some of the second scale. One ship here, German light cruiser. And of course, this one is making the rounds here. Um, the 1 350th scale uh, Klingon Tanga class battle cruiser by um, Polar Lights. It's a hundred bucks. Um, there's a guy online um, on YouTube called SteveTheFish.com, I think it is. And let me just verify because I always butcher names, so I apologize, Steve, if you're listen watching this video. But I think he's building one. I don't know how far he's into it, but he has been painting it. I've been watching his videos every now and then. Um... Uh, da, 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 Steve, mm -hmm. where are you? SteveTheFish.com. No, sorry, SteveTheFish.net. My apologies, Steve. He's building that. And then we have some resin parts, aftermarket, uh, aftermarket parts, to you know bring out the kit. And here is the Klingon aftermarket kit with added detailed lights so if you get the polar lights you're not getting lights with that kit you have to p purchase it separately u.s soldier dress blue that's actually really nice how they did that very good detail there that's actually a very cool corsair Breaking down on how to assemble it. Cool, interesting. He used the Lego set to actually stabilize the kit to paint it. Or maybe no, no, not to paint it. To because sometimes when you put when you put the um, wings together, sometimes they don't fall into place. They over they they bend or they turn, and it's all part of the molding process. Sometimes it doesn't do it right. So you definitely need something to support it. Certain weights, certain. So, Lego is a good idea to use that. Is he using um, some masking techniques? That's actually really nice. I like that. That is very nice. Makes me want to buy a Corsair. And it's not, you know, he did a heavy blue, but then he didn't lighten it up a bit. So, that's actually really nice with a little bit of weathering and chipping effects up front. That's actually really nice. A, uh, a T-47 Airspeeder. What brand did he use? Bandai's 148 scale. Alright, so it's the bigger scale. I have the one that I purchased uh, at um, at a um, garage sale that they were selling for two bucks. But it's the classic one, not the um, Bandai version. Still, I would like to p build it and paint it for shits and giggles. Some nice weathering. Good detail on the color. And it's a little bit of a greenish color. So he didn't have to actually make it the Hoth version. It could be a different version. Now this is crazy. The one thing about Star Trek kits and the newer Star Trek kits is the fact that now you get the decal sets. And usually when the decal is larger than it what's normally is it's also very difficult to work with because there's the possibility of you either damaging it 
or not sitting correctly. I kind of I'm going to read this in detail later on because it actually uses the blue microset bottle, which I do have. As a matter of fact, here it is. I was using it on my kits, so it's good to read and get more info about it. Sometimes you don't normally see uh, information like this, but it's a it's painstaking to actually do that to put it on and then making sure you don't rip it. I remember ripping the decal set from my um, assault uh, carrier from the um, from the model line, the one that I was given as a as a gift by uh, Gundam Planet, and it pissed me off. But I said, you know, what are you gonna do? Um, you really need to have patience to put decals like this, especially on a Star Trek kit. Ah, the infamous Gorgo. It's London. I see he actually give it, gave the uh, base more detail. Made a wooden base here so you can put the kit on top of it. Put more debris, different type of color tones. You see, if I would have had this when I was a kid, I would have been playing with it, not painting it. Ooh. Reuse parts and heavy tooling produces a starship trip. Scratch building the USS Kelvin. Now that's some work right there. All right, so we've got here Nordicon 2018. I've we'll always see this in every other show. Somebody built a very nice strike Gundam right there, 100 scale. F84G, 148 scale. A 135th scale M4 Sherman. Ooh, that's actually really nice. Asagawa's B25J. I believe the J model comes with an artillery piece under it. Could be wrong. And we have a Russian air, uh, ship. What's it called? I'm not even going to pronounce it. Bike right there. Hey, there's the Barbatos. I'm glad to see Hob um, Fine Scale monitor Modeler magazines starting to show off and review Gundam kits. As a matter of fact, I'm hoping maybe, uh, maybe I haven't purchased magazines in a long time, and this is the first time I've purchased one in over a year. Um, every now and then, when I go to Barnes and Noble, I'll take a peek and see what they have. But I'm glad to see that now, there, since Gundam is now more accessible here in the United States and across the world, that there should be reviewing, so, you know, kits like that in this magazine. Uh, this one is actually not about building an aircraft. This is actually how to use, you know, how to dissinuate, um, like the markings of different aircraft and uh, associated with different air services of the Navy, and whatever ships they're on. So, um, I know that sometimes the kit will come with the markings, but then you would want different markings that didn't come with it. And you have to either buy third party or build, make your own. Dropping flaps and salts. Reposition control surfaces to put a super hard at these. Okay. Wonder what that could be. Some more galleries here. Some game workshop, of course. This is actually really nice. I've seen this one time at a store. Um that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work to build something like that. This is actually really nice. I like this. It's a weird ship, and I've never liked the color, but this design and how it is, and, and using the LED, LED lights to get more a more di um, different look to it. Somebody was asking me if I wanted this kit, and this was like a little over ten years ago. It now that I've now broadened my building skills, I would have. I would have taken it in a heartbeat and done something with it. Uh, ooh, nice diorama. Pretty nice. That's pretty cool. And we have a uh, Skyhawk there. Very good detail, especially with decals. Wow. 
I've noticed also that sometimes the designs of decals are, uh, or the markings of kits are so unique that you don't need to use the decals that come with it. You can actually paint it yourself. Like I've seen people paint this without using the decal that came with the kit. Cool diorama battle scene there. Another utilitarian vehicle. This is a lot of work, especially when you want to do the aircrafts. And I always did like the the um, hybrid aircraft carriers. That's really nice. Pol polished weathering. That's actually really nice. Some techniques there. And here, of course, they're reviewing the kits. This is uh, Ryfield Tackle's Big Gun Egyptian T-34. Never heard of that brand before. Cessna LC-126A. That's really nice. Looks like an old kit. Uh, I, IBG TKS tank it. Wow, that's actually really nice. Tamiya Scout Car. All right, and for those of you who are big into Got Nightwalker, well, that's actually really cool. Ooh, that's actually a nice kit right there. Uh, guys, I hope you guys enjoy this um, little review of these two magazines. Um, I don't normally do this every now and then, but something for you guys to look forward to. If you guys see something interesting, go to your local um, bookstore. Maybe you'll see it there, or get a subscription. And, uh, see if you find some unique, keep, you know, unique tools and insights on how to use these for your future kits. So, I'd like to thank you guys all for watching this review of Fine Scale Modeler, and stay tuned for more Gundam models yet to come. You guys all have a great day.